everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer Butt. And today I'm going to show you how you can make this really lovely sunset ocean scene easily. I'm going to explain it step by step, every technique, every color mix. I'm going to explain why I'm doing the things that I'm doing, tell you what tools I'm using. If you check the description below, you're going to find a link to my website where there is a written out mini book downloadable chapter to help guide you through this. So if you like to have those two layers of learning, there's traceables, there's references, there's everything you need as a beginner. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me with this goal of teaching beginners to paint by making sure that one of our robotic cameras is actually pointing at what I'm doing. And you can really see my hands and the activity that you're really engaged in what's going on with the brush. You can see the brush pressure, kind of sometimes even how much water is in it. And we'll talk about that the whole time. Now, maybe you came because you saw this wonderful thumbnail and you thought, yes, I can paint that, or at least I'll give it a try. And welcome. Be sure and hit the subscribe button if you have not done that, because I teach art for free all month, every month, all year. So if you would like to learn how to paint, this is a great place to do it. If you're here for the acrylic April 30 day painting challenge, you will have noticed that maybe I made some juggling moves to the calendar. And I did that because I think it's important whenever you're painting every day to be flexible for how you're feeling and the energy levels that you have. And maybe some days are big project days and some days need to be light, fun. I don't know, like dessert days. This is kind of an art dessert piece. This is a great place to show all the skills that you've been learning each day. Like these are all the things that we've already talked about and you guys have practiced. You're really ready for this. And hopefully at this point you'll see like, wow, some of these things are a lot easier now. Uh huh. Whether you're here for the first time or you're here returning, I would like to invite you to get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now because together we're going to paint this. So for today's project, we're going to use an eight by eight surface. My wish for you is that you create space to be flexible and relax. And what I mean by that is basically that if you are doing the daily painting, that you remember sometimes you may feel fatigued or tired and it's a good idea to be flexible enough to pick a simpler project or to be in this space for less time. That is what I'm doing actually today and I would encourage you to do that. Just make sure that you're keeping painting fun. Now the colors for today are cadmium yellow. This is the tight knit yellow sometimes called light Naples yellow, uh, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, titanium white. This is an unusual yellow. If you don't have it, you can just leave it out. You don't have to have this exact color. If you'd like to know what's a good exchange for it, you can read the blog that is listed in the description. Also be sure and check out the mini book because if you're really new to painting, the step-by-step -step book with the video really elevates the level of success. Now, John. Yes. I think there's nothing to do but do a ground. So let's come back for step one yes. and we'll start the painting. To begin this project, it's actually a very fun and simple start. I'm going to take a bright brush that's about an inch wide. Uh, this one happens to be a number 26 bright on a short handle, but you use whatever brush you have that's not going to make you work too hard to paint the whole background. I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue, and I'm going to mix them together in equal amounts. And then I'm going to come make a very light blue sky color. I'm going to do this and we're going to paint the whole surface this color because it's going to let us have a little more control over our sky turning green. I got a lot of questions um, this year about how to prevent a green sky. So I've been thinking about different ways I could show you guys how to do that if you're transitioning from skies that are quite yellow to skies that have a really distinctive blue. And I was like, let's do this. So I'm just painting back and forth, horizontal strokes. I am doing a fairly good job covering the canvas this time. It can be a little bit streaky. It doesn't have to be perfect in any way, but it's just a good idea to get it covered thoroughly. Does that make sense, John? John oh, usually asks me, he's like, can it be streaky? And then I'm like, I guess it's streaky, <laughs> but it can be streaky. Um, it's okay if uh, down at the bottom where the ocean is, if your blue is a little bit darker, you're going to want to just brush this back and forth. Sometimes I turn the canvas just to help improve 
uh, the comfort of my brush stroke, but not because that's necessary. Uh huh. And I'm just brushing back and forth, and I'm making sure that the paint is thoroughly integrated into the surface. And when I'm sure it is, which I feel like I am now, that looks pretty good. Good coverage yeah. all the way around. I'm going to dry it, and I'll show you how to do the next step of this really fun and easy ocean painting. Let's set a horizon line. I'm going to bring out my tool. This is a T-square. It's a special ruler that helps me draw a very straight line. I think it's important on horizons to make sure that your line is straight. You can do a lot with water, but having an angled horizon is just going to make it look like the ocean is pouring out. And I'm going to go ahead and really have this be about a lot of sky. And we're going to have a low view in our ocean. Like we're going to be kind of deep low in the viewer perspectives if we were snorkeling and our eyes were just peeking out of the water looking out towards the horizon so that's going to be a different view than we've done before but it's still going to be fun and a nice break and so i think you guys are going to like that the other thing you might want to think about is that our light source is going to be right here where the light source is it's going to do a couple of things it's going to make sure that this is kind of in the yellows and peaches coming out and the sky is going to cool as it comes up. It's here that a lot of people have a, a big struggle of it turning green, but because we have done the blue and dried it, we can control some of that transition. And I'm also gonna show you guys some half mixes and some other strategies to get through that experience. I'm going to take a number eight cat's tongue uh, brush, and basically this is just a pointed filbert in my art triple line, but you could use a regular filbert or a bright brush for this technique. The type of brush here is not that important. I'm going to get a bunch of white on my brush, kind of loaded in heavily. And then maybe a little of my Naples yellow light. And brush back and forth up above the horizon line. I'm not going to tape this time. I'm going to show you guys. You can just do a steady brush. Well, horizons aren't perfectly, you know, they're not like a perfect line. They have little bump leads in them. Well, if they're far enough at the distance optically, sometimes they are a perfect line. Yeah, <laughs> they can be. They they can be, but like also like if it's if there's any heat rising off the surface, it can cause distortions and that waves. That is absolutely and, true. And like wind and clouds, and <laughs> so like you know if somebody comes along and they're like picking on you for not having a perfect line, say, dude, heat causes distortion. Use science against them is your theory. Yeah, be like it's supposed to be like that. If I put a perfect line, it would not be accurate. Wouldn't be real. <laughs> they would just shut them down. <laughs> shut them down with science. I don't know if that's what Bill Nye meant for you to do with those lessons, but okay. No, I think Bill Nye totally meant for you to use science to defend your artwork and would stand behind that. Especially for hecklers. Now, I'm going to come here, and you've noticed that I've kept this color very light, very yellow, very light. Yes. I'm going to take a smidge of my pink. Smidge, smidge, smidge of my pink and white. And I'm going to come here and blend that in. This is just, and I can even mix a little bit of the Naples yellow and come here. And we're doing what's called a half tone mix, which is that instead of asking it to go from one color to another color completely in the transition, I'm using a mix between the two to ease that transition. coming here and it's nice because now we definitely have blue and pink and no green but how do we get to the top so I'm going to bring a little pink out and I'll get some of my blue mixture into that pink and this is again us making that sort of half tone transition mm -hmm. We did this a little bit in one of the pre-shows, but I just wanted to focus a whole thing on it since that seemed to be a very important question that had come out of it. You know, and as I go, I can keep adding some blue to that mix. I'm 
coming back and forth and going down. And now we're getting actually a pretty nice transition, which you'll notice does not have any green in it. Mm -hmm. So you can go from that sort of yellow sky to this blue sky up here. Now it's real easy for me to do. It really is. So sometimes it's just about creating, I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit. I've got a lot of clouds and everything to put in, but I just want a nice blend. Sometimes it's just about making sure that going from here through there, you create nice transitions that don't give the eye an optical like break. So no green. <laughs> that's really that's, nice. That's how you would get that. Um, before I do the next part, I will want to dry my surface. And then I'm going to come back and do a little cloud in the little sky just for drama, just for fun. So I'm going to place my light source a little bit off the center line. That's kind of nice because it also gives some drama. And I'm going to put this low to the water. I can see it. it's a little hard with the white chalk, but I can see it. And I'm going to think about having my clouds come down this way on either side, kind of making an interesting little holding cup. I'm going to be putting a glow around here, moving out into some peaches, and then I'm going to layer some clouds over that. To start that, I will go ahead and grab a little of my uh, CAD yellow medium and titanium white. Makes a great beginning kind of range. I will have to come in and lighten the center here, but I can do that when I put in the sun. So it's kind of a brighter glow right there. Above that brighter glow, I definitely am going to want to take a little bit of my quinacridone and Naples yellow light and kind of make an interesting peach. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get any of my blue in it because that'll gray it out. I'm going to rinse that out a bit, and then I'll come here and use the edge of the brush to sort of carefully blend it. I can even sometimes lighten that peach just a bit there towards the center because everywhere that the sun is, it definitely impacts the way the light is. Yeah. Take a little of this color together. Maybe even get my add yellow in and come on the outside edge here. I'm going to just brush in. I'm going to leave a little cradle. The further away from the sun you are, the uh, darker and cooler the light can be. Hmm. That's a fun thing to play with. So I can get more into the magenta on this outer edge. Brushing in. I can add a little white my brush water to my brush if I want to improve blending if it's getting a little dry towards the center you can also use a blending medium to some pretty good effect so you can see we're starting to get that center yeah come back the opposite way and blend out a little of this yellow and white More yellow and white. And it's a little bit thoughtful for the placing of the sun. But when you go to layer the clouds in, if you have that done well, it's going to make uh, them look just a little bit better on the horizon line. Mm -hmm. It's also going to make this wonderful play of peach and blue in the ocean uh, make a little bit more sense to your mind and your eye. This is going to be relaxing to do. I want to call this a step because I want to kind of chill this lesson out and really break this down. Again, make sure you're checking the resources below the description. Get those mini books. Get the step by steps. You know, use any of the resources like the traceables, the grids, whatever helps you have an easier time here. Because art that's fun, you will do every day, which I highly encourage. Yeah. You gave me a funny look. What? No. I'm going to dry this and we're going to call this a step.
we're going to put in the clouds. And I'm going to say right now, sometimes for beginners, there's that feeling where like clouds are just the fluffy, fluffy little white enemy that hangs in the sky. And I want to say they're not, but there's a couple thoughts that you've got to feel in your head. You've got to kind of be thinking about. And one of them is the random edges that clouds have. If you were to look at a traceable from the website, you would see that we really picked some very meandering, wandering edges. So for this, try to keep a pressure light, the brush pressure light, and try to make sure that the edges of your clouds are soft and wandery. They go up, they go down, they're not clones, they're not real solid shapes. And that's really that first big area where you wanna work on clouds. I'm gonna start by taking a little bit of my quinacridone and my Naples yellow light. I'm gonna make this really fun kind of peachy color. I'm using a number four, number six, Cambridge uh, hog brush, which you just want a hog brush in a number six about this size. Doesn't have to be this exact one. It's okay uh, where it's going to be to the outside if we get a little bit of this blue in it. And let's come here and just talk a little bit about some weird little clouds. Weird clouds. All clouds are weird. Strange little strange little beasties. But see how I'm kind of just making little circular motions with my brush. The handle's a bit at an angle so that the brush is connecting from the mid belly to the toe. Mm -hmm. I'm not pressing very hard and that's going to allow the brush to connect lightly to the surface and keep those edges soft. And right here I'm going to allow some like blue sky to peek through All right. on those clouds because that's going to uh, make them seem like, I almost want to call it crown shyness, but that's for trees, but mm. that there's little currents and spaces between them, little areas of air that have broken through. We're just going like that. It's not particularly challenging. If you're further up in the sky, the cloud's going to go more into a lavender or a white. As you come closer to the horizon in the sun, it'll go warmer into the peach. I'm just kind of working that through. Every once in a while I have to rinse my brush out. Mm -hmm. And when I rinse my brush out, especially if I'm doing a hog bristle brush, I'm going to really pull the water out of it with a towel because if I don't, uh, it will be too soggy. Oh, that's that natural fiber. Yeah, it's, well, not not fiber. It's, it's I mean, Bris well, bri it's boar bristles. Bristles, yeah, they're, for they're, uh, hair. Hair. Or no, they're the br bristles. Hairs are different, bristles. apparently. I guess, yeah. So I can come down here and get more into this like peachy color. And as I get to the bottom, I can brush this up because there's sort of a interesting little updraft soft edge. And we'll come back with some yellow and do some fun stuff with this, but that's a great way to get that going. And get more into those like yellows and oranges. Let's make a little weird random shape kind of coming up there. Got a little hair, so I just lift it up with my brush and pull it away. Yeah. Your hog bristles will shed, especially when they're new, but they shouldn't do it forever. You should have breakage on occasion, and that's because the pH of acrylic causes the, the hairs and bristles to break more. So I'm out opening like little puffers. These are little puffers. Yeah. It's a good idea to have some puffers. I can get back into my lavender if I need to shade this right here. Isn't that a neat little cloud formation? It really is. So sometimes when you're painting, uh, maybe you came here because you were like, that's a really pretty sunset and I want to paint that. And you're like, and she's got a lot of free resources and that will help me. Uh, but if you're here doing the 30 day program, Right? And you're like, oh, this is a surprise. And like we talked about in the beginning, 
sometimes uh, when you're painting and you, and you set a challenge goal for yourself, this is whether you're doing Inktober or Mermaid or uh, Doodle Wash in, in July, whatever art challenge you're doing, you always have to have a plan for when you're mentally or emotionally fatigued mm-hmm. or when life um, throws you a curveball. It's super important because that's what keeps those sort of internal uh, challenges that you make to yourself uh, repeatable and doable and sustainable. I'm rinse out a bit. I like that cloud formation. That's super fun. I'm going to take a little of the quinacridone magenta. Again, back down to this kind of navel yellow. It can pick up a little cad if it wants to. If you don't have the yellow that I'm using here, don't worry about it. It won't ruin the paint. It's just layers of clouds. Yeah, we're just layering the clouds. We're taking a relaxed moment. And some of you just went, relax with clouds. What? No, you can't do that. Here we are. I'm just going to take a minute to relax with our clouds. Get a little white into it to improve the coverage. Sometimes white helps with opacity. And get a little yellow. Fun to play with these little central clouds, make little, little unusual mm-hmm. creatures. It's, it's fun to just to sit out there and look at the sky and find those, the interesting clouds that you want to capture. I think it's just one of the best parts of being an artist is just learning that you can always be painting whether you have your uh, canvas with you or not. Right? You're always painting. No matter what you're doing, I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone up into my phthalo and ultramarine and grab just a little white here. We're going to make kind of the beginnings of these upper bar clouds over here. Uh-huh. We can add this color to some of the purples that I put there. Just a little bit lighter. important to see these opportunities for highlights. If it goes a little white, you just come back and this is going to be all about the way that we handle the reflections that are going on. We'll have to come back with kind of a warmed uh, reflection. We'll actually take this to the Naples yellow at a certain point. Mm-hmm. But right now, Back into maybe a little bit of the quinacridone over on this side. So many times we think of clouds in the sense of a cumulus nimbus, but over the ocean you get some really unusual cloud formation. I think it's because of the environment, updraft conditions, Mm. meteorological conditions will let you get some really interesting interesting clouds. And you can see I'm just engaging the brush, I'm touching it and removing it. And you can see that there's just this this start to what is a little bit of kind of a cloud formation. Yeah. Going there. Let's dry that and call that a step. So the big thing for you at this point in your painting is to make sure that you have these fun and interesting irregular shapes. Once we have these, we come back with highlights and if necessary shadows, but mostly a lot of highlights to create a huge amount of drama in our sky. Let's start with our central area and we're going to take our yellow and a good bit of white and let's come underneath our clouds on the toe of our brush uh-huh. and make sure that the edge maybe has a little bit of that yellow. Right, we're catching the edge. This is like a backlighting. It's not like the silver lining that we sometimes do, which is super fun. This is that cool under 
under edge lighting you only get near sunset or dawn you only get it near sunset or dawn where the clouds are lit underneath and you know that it's going to be there whether you have a reference or not like even if you're doing this for imagination if you put the sun low in the sky you're going to need to have it closer to the the sun's uh, appearance in the horizon you'll make the edges of those clouds more of a light white and then as you go into them deeper away they'll become more orange and pink I'm just getting white over to my yellow, and you can see that's already becoming pretty dramatic. Uh huh. Looking pretty good. As I go towards the outside edge, yeah, maybe get more into like a very rosy pink with the quinacridone. Creating quite a bit of drama if I need to get into just my quinacridone and go back and maybe add a shadow. And as I said, we would do that at some point here. You can do that easily as well. Mm-hmm. You just want to be aware that you've got to create highlights in those structures. Oh, wow. That underlit cloud looks so cool. It's so fun, right? Yeah. Same thing over here. I'll bring a little of this yellow like over here and we can come down. Brush up a bit. I have an upward brush. That talks a little bit about what that cloud's going through. Yeah. So it's like reverse painting clouds. You paint the underside of the clouds. The way most people paint the top. Oh, that, that was too bright. That would be not that bright over there. So I got to come back with a, a color to mute that back. Because you want those bright values there towards those edges. You would go into that. If you could get into a yellow and white. More out here. Uh -huh. But you couldn't have it back there. So it's about its location in relationship. The sun is the source of all life. Yeah. For serious and real serious. You can see it just goes on the toe. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And it just boom. It really does. I love how the cl how the skies just sort of um happen. Yeah. Now I'm gonna get maybe into like a more pink highlight. And it is light. But it's maybe not as tinged as say the areas like closer to the mm -hmm. to the the coronal. Is that what it be? What would we refer to as the sun effect that's there? That, that's coronal. I mean, like coronal is the the outside. That's the the crown of the the sun. Corona. It's sort of the outside edge of it. So you can see we got more into these like pinks and whites for these upper clouds because they're not as close to that glow. Yeah. So we're just moving up there. Very touching. It's just a little bit. Just wiggling it around. And you can play with where you think it needs more pink mm. versus where it's going to have a little more white. 
And really, that's all it is. Just a little bit of a sky exercise, just a little bit of a fun sky that you can do. You can always just, if you want to really drama that, I don't know. We don't want drama in our life. I love this guy, though. Drama in our news cycle. But sometimes we do want drama in our paintings. So I can come back here as well and pick a little bit of this. Exaggerate. Mm -hmm. And that can push it a little bit, I find. Oh, yeah. You can always find that space for that. Just beautiful. Isn't it? Yeah. And here in the center, I'm going to take a little bit of white. And I guess I'll get a little cad yellow. Going to brush in a circle just a little bit oh, it's like this radial. Kind of space. I don't want it to be super noticeable, like overwhelmingly so. Uh -huh. So it's important to be aware of that. I'm going to grab a little more white. So it's a little bit towards the Van Gogh, but it's not a full Van Gogh. <laughs> it probably is okay if it does go full Van Gogh. Yeah. It won't hurt. We're just talking a little bit about that center of light. And then I'm going to take my brush, make sure it's on a point. I'll put the sun in there. Yeah, I can put a little sun in there. Once I have the sun in there, in a bit of that corona, I can add a few of these like little more lit bits. Uh huh. And that's how I get those in. <laughs> There's our sky. That was fun. <laughs> now we can do the next step and start on the water. So we want to create kind of a low profile of waves, and that means that the uh, values and zones will be bigger up here, uh, closer to us, and then smaller as we go away. Mm -hmm. But I want to catch, capture kind of like a general um, reflection on the water because we've been talking about water as a mirror, so we've got to get some water as a mirror going on down here. And to do that, I'm going to take my altering blue, and my thalo blue, and maybe a smidge of my quinacridone, interestingly enough, to start the reflection uh, value in the water. So it is a reflection of the sky, but it's just a little bit more in that cool purple. Uh -huh. And I'm going to paint this whole area that color to start. seems like a good place to start. It's a good place to start. Sometimes in water, you just need a good place to start. Make sure I keep it into the blue. And light enough. And that will be the thing. I would say I could even lighten it up even more than this. Mm -hmm. There we go. Water reflects light. There we go. I am going to pay attention to brush directionality. And if you guys will indulge me, I'm going to turn the canvas to the side. And the reason I'm going to do that sure. is just so that I have control over my line. To make that even water line? Yeah. 
Now, if you weren't as confident, you could tape it. I could use a low-tack tape and tape it. Um, we had some people run into some evil tape. <laughs> I don't think it was the right kind of low-tack tape. Oh. That part, what happened was not funny, though. The evil tape is evil tape is funny, but what happened is not funny. And it tore, the, it tore their paper. That's no fun. So it's very important to use artist tape. But I, because of that, I want to show how you can just do this freehand. That's a pretty good start. It really is. Reflection. Now the I want to leave an area for highlight and shadow from here. I am going to want to rinse my brush out. I'm not going to worry about drying it at this stage. I'm going to put my number eight cat's tongue aside, number eight cat's tongue, and I'm going to get a number four round. This is my number four round. It's a synthetic. It's a little different than my hog in that it has a sharp point. And I'm going to make my shadow value, which is my ultramarine blue, my thalo blue, and a little bit of my quinacridone magenta. And that's going to be the dark color of my water. Oh no, I got a drop. Don't oh, no. let the drop happen. See? Yeah. It unbinds the paint. You just... Sometimes when your when your water cup is close by, that can happen. Make sure the paint is correct. Drops happen, you want to avoid them. I'm gonna come over here to the left hand side and I'm gonna make very small distant little shadow mark. The further the way the mark is, the smaller it will be. And it'll be the relationship of size between these distant reflections and what's happening uh, up close that's going to make us feel like it is kind of water. Just breathe easy and enjoy the little dashes. I'm just making little dashes, loading on the toe of my brush, light pressure so I'm not over thickening the line. The calm body of water. That's what I needed today. Today I needed a calm body of water. Sometimes I do paint for my emotional state and uh, to improve my emotional state or maintain an emotional state. So I'll pick images or ideas um, that will help enforce that. Mm -hmm. And this really struck me as something that would definitely do that. Come in lighter through here. Reflections through there will actually intrinsically change. And I've got a lot of thoughtfulness I've got to do here. This part is a little busy. Small, small little marks in the distance. And bigger, more defined marks as it comes forward. So really only like a half inch. Here where the sunlight is going to come down, I can add a few more thoughtful marks. Thoughtful means like I'm not just making dashes, like I'm really thinking about the shape of the mark, mm -hmm. shape of the wave, shape of what's going on. And again, I don't mind um, the surface being wet because it'll kind of blend a little bit into... Get a little bigger. And get a little bigger. Now, now I'm thinking about how the waves are affected. Mm hmm. We've been doing this this whole month, right? Just thinking about the way water and light shadow affect each other. I can start to move at an angle. Um, 
because some of the waves may be blowing in the wind. And as it gets bigger, gets it gets closer to you, the yeah. bigger waves. It's interesting how the small ones that you put in make the ones closer. It makes the bigger ones look closer to you. Right. That that atmospheric perspective that we get going. And then it will also be the peach of the sky. There'll be some highlights and reflections that are going to really make the water pop. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the shadows uh, coming forward are maybe not as dark, and some are much darker. So I can always add, you know, a little white. Bring those across. And add a little more white in here. A little bigger waves as we come forward. Mm -hmm. There's a nice dark value right here that's super focal. Come off canvas, see, and just going and building up. Remember, the viewpoint is as if we're a little head is peeking out of the water. Maybe we're a mermaid, maybe we're a snorkeler, maybe we're on vacation. We finally got away from the house. We just get some nice fresh air and sunshine. So this is the view we would have. Water's darker where it's deeper or in shadow. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we're informing our decisions. It definitely also flows. I mean, I know that sounds like nonsense. Philosophical nature of water. The philosophical nature of water is super important when you're painting it. You know, as I go forward, I can get a little more white into it, and I can kind of like maybe shade some of it. Wow, those waves look really nice. They're starting to. They're starting to look okay. A lot we have going on there for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's get that in and come back and add some more color and highlights. Now we're going to use the effect of light on water to create some more realism, but yet relaxed fun in the painting. Let's go for that. Let's say it's realism with relaxed fun. That sounds like a good plan. Let's go for that. So again, number four round, I'm going to get my brush wet. I have changed my water so it's clean. And I do that because uh, your water can start tinting your color and dull it a bit. And I wanted a bright color. So I'm going to come here and take my Naples yellow, the titanate yellow. Here's the exact tube that I use. This is the exact tube that I use. Um, but again, read the blog because I explain the whole thing. So it's a complicated thing. It's super easy once it's explained. I'm not making it sound that way right now. And I recognize that, but it is. <laughs> I'm going to add a little white to this. And we're kind of getting into those sky colors for reflections. And I maybe even want to go a little lighter over here. 
And I'm going to come down the center. And highlight the tops of some of this. as I go. Sometimes I'll want to get it a little more peach. Yeah. Because I'm basically taking all the sky and cloud colors and putting it in the water. Oh, yeah. I've got to remember to not paint out all my watercolor as well. That's going to be very important, but I can come put it back pretty easily. And through the center here, it is actually fairly missing. But then as we go out, it will come back in. You can see that we're helping inform the, the shape and, uh -huh. and flow of the wave. Coming back just, through. Just following the... Um... Following our lines. Top of the waves. Bring this stuff along the top of the wave. Yeah. Now I may come and add a little bit of the blue and white into my brush. And yeah, that does go a little bit green, but this is the ocean, so that's not bad. Yeah. Those half tones start to be my friends. Coming back for, and I'm just trying to shade the water. If you think about it, this is very similar to if you were painting folded fabric. It's just you paint what you see present. I can always easily go back in and be like, no, I think you need a little darker value here or there. Uh huh. So we can definitely enjoy the flow and ebb of that. Enjoy. 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 Why well, I get so excited that I do. And I like to mix all these little different values because they are present in the water. Yeah. And come back here with maybe like a little pink around that. With a dark in line. Things do things that water is doing. Yep. Things that water is doing. Things that the water wants to do. Water is very busy. <laughs> <laughs> it has an agenda. Don't undermine the water's agenda. I like the complicated uh, color layers in the waves. It's I really the, fun. Especially the, the peaches are what make it sort of unusual. You know what I mean? Yes, very much so. 
speaking of, let's get a nice, I've got a little too much blue there, so I'm going to pull this out and get some uh, more peach going. Ocean peach. You know, and as I come out towards the edge, I can always get more into the white. Mm. All these different little colors. Because water is a mirror. It really is. And just like you had a small reflection uh, shadows, you can do small little reflections in the background here. Mm -hmm. The water is just a very busy, busy piece of kit. Got a lot going on. It really does. And there's a lot of adjustments that you can make as you go. So sometimes it's like just getting a certain amount in. Uh-huh. And then coming back and adjusting that as, as you need it. But I'll add white to this and pick up little highlights on waves. Kind of trying to show you where they're high and low. And it starts to create a little flow in motion, doesn't it? It really does. Now... We don't want to overwhelm ourselves, so, you know, uh, pay attention to how you're feeling in your back and your body. Super important. Are you hurting? Are you bending your, over bending your neck? These long painting sessions, right, that we have? Yep. You've got to pay attention to your physicality. That's why a lot of people paint it in easels. It's just a good body position. I paint flat because we're filming. Yeah. But sometimes I'm painting an easel. It's a very complicated series of cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little different. A little different. I'm back here with maybe more of this little peachy lavender color that we have going. You can see this becomes another set of interesting reflections mm -hmm. so all those sky colors are starting to come down into our ocean and play mm -hmm. and they need to have highlights sometimes they are highlighted Let's call that a step and come back and continue this process and just continue to refine the movement of the water and what's happening in our, in our visual space, which is our eyes. So let's continue to refine the value that we have in our water. I'm going to take my number eight cat tongue because I like its shape. Again, a filbert or a round will work. Mm -hmm. I'm picking a larger brush just so that I'm not having to work uh, particularly hard for big spaces. I'll take my ultramarine blue over to my phthalo blue, and I'm going to add a little of my quinacridone magenta to make our deep sea color. Not a total purple, but it definitely has some deep values in it. And I'm going to make sure that some of our water. Mm. The, the depth. Has some depth because it would. Yeah. That really adds a lot. I like it. Doesn't have to go everywhere this deep if you do want some depth out there. Mm -hmm. 
And I may go ahead and throw some deeper values in with my number four, mm -hmm. just to have some control in some spaces. They're smaller. I'm just finding little spots to create uh, some dramatic, dramatic movement. And the shadows do help create some deep and dramatic movement. Yep. And then we can come back into our highlighted areas. So I can be more in the yellow, the Naples mm -hmm. yellow and the Cad yellow and our white. And we can play that more down the center. And that's really because this area has the sunlight hitting it. Mm -hmm. When we come down with the very brightest of it, it will really, really be quite stunning. Oh, yeah. Now I want to get into my peach here, which is my cad yellow, my quinacridone, and my naples yellow light. We're going to get some strong peaches. Just so that there's some strong reflective color. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like all the, the, the different or peaches and yellows in the, in the waves. It really makes them look like they're that they exist in this sunset? Yes. One of those fun things that you can do when you're painting is is really play with the quick color is dancing out in the water. And also, you know, trying to think of it as dancing in the water. Mm-hmm. little pop a little more yellow in it when you get more yellow in it it really increases the glow it really does with the water all right let's call that a step so now we can start creating some drama and finishing work in the piece mm -hmm. i'm going to get my brush wet and come down the center and i'm going to pull out just my pad yellow and quite a lot of my white i don't want it to be pure white yet I'm going to reserve that for the last. And coming down the center, mm -hmm. I really want to brighten and highlight this whole range from the sun. If 
grew up near a beach, you know exactly what this looks like with the sparkling water and the motion and the way the color looks liquid on the surface. Mm-hmm. If you didn't, now you do. As I come down, I can also hit the tops of some of the little rises. Mm -hmm. Give me some highlights. Yeah. It's just about painting and playing with that space coming down. Mm -hmm. I like to call it the corridor of light. If you're doing the whole 30 days with us, you've heard me talk about the corridor of light. Mm -hmm. I talk about it a lot, like when we're painting even landscapes. It will do this across plants and, and different elements as well. You can start to really show how mm -hmm. the sunlight is washing down the ocean. Then I'm going to come into my white. And from the back here, I'm going to tap out a little bit of pure white. Oh, yeah. That's where it really starts to get the wave motion. I mean, like Pretty. this already has a lot, but this makes that little sparkliness, you know? And I think it's good to study water like this that's in motion, it's well lit, that has a lot of unexpected colors because it asks you as a painter to really do a lot of thinking. It's good for your art brain. You can flare this out if you want to, like pretend it has a lens flare. Um, we're not going to do that because we're just painting it as it would be. Mm -hmm. Just little highlights. That's coming down the water where maybe the the light is reflecting very brightly at you. Mm-hmm. Because again, remember you're peeking up through your snorkel. Mm -hmm. or whatever, looking up at the ocean, and this is maybe the view that you would see going back towards the light. At that just a little bit of ocean with some sparkly light that's awesome just perfect getaway right mm -hmm. mentally it's a mental getaway mental retreat sometimes we all need a mental art retreat <laughs> oh that was wonderful if you join me for just this one painting i hope you really love what you found here be sure and hit the subscribe button comment and tell me what else you'd like to paint Go check out the website. There's so many free download resources for you as a new painter to make this sort of painting party at home experience that you're having so much better. And if you're here for all 30 days of acrylic April, I know today was a bit of a surprise, but we all need a mental art retreat sometimes. And in life, whenever you're doing those art challenges, it's so important to pace yourself, to recognize where you're at and be flexible enough to make adjustments, but still keep your personal goals. I totally forgot to sign, so let me put that signature in.
That happens to me sometimes. I get so into painting and going mm -hmm. that I forget the part where I let everyone know who painted it. I'm going to make a nice light color that was part of the painting. And I will just come here and very carefully add a signature. I always try to add a signature that does not pull away from the design of the painting. Mm hmm I do want people to be able to see who made it, but I don't want to have gone through all this work and then suddenly pull the eye over here into the corner, which is why I'm not picking a cad red or something crazy. <laughs> all right. Now it's signed. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I hope to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.